No, I didn't. And I, I didn't mislead the House. And uh, I don't uh, believe I'm guilty of a contempt. And I think that this process happily will, will vindicate me. I know it's been going on for, for a long time. I'm grateful to, to the committee. Let's just remember what this is all about, because I think people f forget. This is about whether, when I, when I went into Parliament on the 1st and I think the 8th of December 2021, uh, and I said that guidance, rules, regulations have been followed in, uh, in number 10, I actually believed or suspected uh, at that time or knew that um, there'd been events that, that broke the rules. And I didn't. I believed that uh, what we were doing was within the rules. And that's what I, why I said what I said to, to Parliament. And I think what's so interesting about the report today is that after 10 months of, of effort and sifting through all the, uh, the innumerable WhatsApps uh, and, and messages, um, they found absolutely no evidence to suggest otherwise. And there's absolutely nothing to show that any advisor of mine or uh, civil servant uh, told me, warned me in advance that an event might be uh, against the rules. Nothing to say that afterwards they thought it was against the rules. Nothing to, to show that um, I, myself, uh, believed or was worried that something was against the rules. So that, that for me is a pretty astonishing gap, given the huge amount of stuff that they have. And you know, given also, frankly, that not all the, the testimony that they have comes from uh, people who are necessarily on my, on my side, as it were. And so I just want to, want, want to repeat, uh, the reason there's that gap, the reason there's no evidence to show that uh, I must have known or I, I, I must have believed that uh, illegal events were taking place is because I didn't. And I thought we were fighting COVID to the best of our ability in very difficult circumstances, in number 10, in the cabinet office, uh, night and day. And I believe that what we were doing was in conformity with the, the COVID regulation. So that is what, why I said what I said in, uh, in Parliament. And uh, that's why I don't think, th I'm, I'm certain there's been no contempt. There are photographs in the report of you in rooms with people who are not socially distanced, uh, in rooms with booze on the table. The committee says, that it would have been obvious to you at the time that these were breaches of the guidance and that because you hadn't mentioned these events that you were at to the House, that may be how you've misled Parliament. Yeah, but you see, and, and of course people will say, oh, it must, it must, have, been, it must have been obvious to you that uh, something was, uh, was, was awry and, and so on. You've got to remember what it's like being, being Prime Minister. You, are, you, you, you do what your civil servants uh, advise you to do, instruct you to do, you, you move from one event to the next. You have a massively regimented diary. Uh, there were a number of events, as everybody, everybody knows, uh, where I uh, went very briefly to say thank you to, to staff and, 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 that, and that kind of thing. Uh, but I believed implicitly that these events were within the rules. Nor did anybody tell me, before or afterwards, anything to the, to the contrary. And, you know, I just... Just imagine. Sorry, can I just speak on? You say before or after. The report has got WhatsApps in it from your director of communications saying things like, I'm struggling to, to see how this was within the rules, that this yeah, blows but, another hole in your account. He, but, I, I, and he's talking about an event in the cabinet room uh, in, in June of, of 2020, where actually, you know, we were, we were so confident that it was totally above board that we... Uh, we, 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 you know, that the one that, that I was fighting for, I continue to apologise for. We actually put it in the in the newspapers. We we briefed it. Out. I didn't brief it out, but, uh, but somebody briefed it out. And um, I never thought that that was against the the rules. And nobody told me uh, before or, or, or afterwards that it was uh, that it was you know against the rules. I was very very surprised. Now, just just imagine that um, I had I had genuinely thought that stuff was going on in number 10 uh, that was COVID rule breaking. And everybody will understand the implications of that. If I'd known that, everyone will understand the implications of that for the government, for our ability to, to fight COVID, what a story that would be. You would expect me in, in, to have immediately communicated something to my closest advisors and officials saying, 
what is this? What is this problem we've got here with this, this event? What are we doing about, doing about it? There's nothing at all to show that. Why not? Because I believed that what we were doing was Im and implicitly within the rules. And that's why I said what I said in the House of Commons. And that, and that is why I think, and I thank the committee for their, for their labours. And, and um, you know, I'm sorry it's all been going on for, for so long. There had been no, the, the COVID guidelines were followed at all times. Did you stop at any point and think back to those events you were at and think, actually, did that? No. Uh, so, so what I, no, what I, what I, because... You didn't consider it at all? No, because what I, what I, what I, we, the thing we were discussing was an event that I actually hadn't been at. This was the, the story that, that, uh, that came, that came in. And uh, there were, and there were some questions about, from the, from the, uh, about other events. But I, I believed implicitly that they were within the rules. And um, that was why I was so confident. And you know, another point, if I'd, if I'd thought that, you know, if I thought it was um, a good idea to go out into, into to, on to, 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 to the dispatch box in front of all my peers, all my colleagues, and say that uh, events, uh, that uh, there were no rule breaking events in, in number 10, when I, or, or cabinet office, when I knew that that could probably be contradicted by dozens and dozens of, of officials, why on earth would I have, would I have done that? It, it, simply, it simply doesn't make sense. I believed that what we were doing was uh, within the rules. That's what I said. That's why I said what I said in, um, in the chamber. Uh, I, that, it was my honest belief at, at the time. And that's why you know, I thank the committee for their labours, but I really don't think there has been a contempt here. I will add one... one um, codicil, if I can, uh, and that is, I do, I do think it is a peculiarity, let me put it that way, that the person who conducted the inquiry into uh, what went on in number 10 and, and the Cabinet Office, uh, who was presented to me as a person of uh, complete political uh, impartiality with absolutely no uh, political axe to grind, whatever, uh, has just been appointed the, uh, the Chief of Staff of the leader of the Labour Party. I mean, I, I make no comment about it, except to say that I'm sure people, you know, may want to draw their own conclusions about the confidence they can place in her inquiry or the motives behind her, the way she conducted uh, her inquiry and in, into, um, into her report. I think, uh, you know, people, I think, well, how can I put this in the most, uh, in the most restricted, problem. I think people will, will, may look at it in a different light. I mean, on the 25th of May last year, you were satisfied that it was a wholly independent report. Isn't I was. that, isn't that I a was. real? It's quite something, isn't it? To question a civil servant's ability to put their own political feelings aside and not be neutral. That's quite. I know, it's I, quite I, a thing to question, isn't it? Uh, look, I th as I say, people will, will make up their own minds about this, and I think that uh, I, if you told me at the time I um, commissioned. Sue Gray to do the inquiry. If you told me all the stuff that I now know, um, I think I might have cross-examined her more closely about her independence, and uh, I might have thought about whether she was whether or I might have asked. Her, I might have invited. Let me put it this way: I might have invited her to reflect on whether she was really the the right person to do it. And some of your colleagues have suggested that this discredits her report. I, I you know, uh, the key point that I want to go, never mind. Sorry, would, you, would you tell ne them that that's not never, true? Never mind, never mind, never mind Sue Gray. And never mind Sue Gray. The key, the key point for me is, is today that, um, you know, people will draw their own conclusions. Uh, the, the, the key thing for me is that today, uh, after a lot of, uh, of, of labour, um, and I, for which I thank them, uh, the select committee have produced a, or the privileges committee, I should say, have produced a, a report which uh, I believe totally vindicates me because there is no evidence uh, whatever that when I stood up in Parliament, I said anything that I did not believe and therefore uh, there, is, there is no, no contempt. No jovial quip, 
This was a former Prime Minister forced into action today, defending his name and launching a scathing attack on one civil servant and MPs investigating a line he repeated again and again. I can tell you once again that I certainly broke no rules. Uh, those were meetings of people at work talking about work.